balance between, you know, a science fiction with mythology and a Romeo and Juliet romance. Well, I think that you need both because you can't just, a pure sci-fi isn't as interesting if you don't have the, the characters, and, and for me, I love the allegories of it, like the huge Battlestar Galactic band. What I loved about that show was that it wasn't just a pure sci-fi show, it was always about those characters, and then there was the allegories of war, and that's what we're trying to do with this show, too. It's a cool sci-fi show where you're going to have the spaceship, and you're going to have the cool holographic bulletin board, because we're in the year 2024, but at the end of the day, it's always going to come back to our characters, to our Romeo and Juliet story, and to the message of bringing these two worlds together, and what does that mean? So, so we, we have, that's why we think about that as well. Can you talk about the differences between the Sector and Emery's world? Because they're both very different places. Yes. We think about, and you guys chime in if you want, um, the Sector is very, has this sort of industrial government. I mean, everything that they have has been given to them by the government. So you'll, you'll get to see what Roman's pod looks like. And we're really going to be expanding that world a lot in the series, both with sets and meeting new characters that live yeah. in the sector. And when you're walking through the market, it should almost feel like you're on another planet. Like you're actually getting to see like they've made this world their own, even if it's just the things that they're using as instruments and the food that they're making and the things the they're doing. Yeah, the gardening. Like they're really making their own world there. And then, and it's a world that feels unfamiliar, I, I think, to us. And then when you are at, in Emery's home, it's a very warm, sort of traditional family home that are all of the comforts of human life that I think that, that we all can access. But in the sector, it's it's a little jarring because it's not what we think of as home, but it's what they think of as home. Though one of the fun things for us is because the show takes place 10 years in the future, we do get to play with, it's not just the traditional suburban school or home, there's, there's these little techie flourishes of, you know, the way the cafeteria works and the way her world sort of operates. So for us, it's so fun because, and, and like, the, our production designer and prop guys, it's not like we, we could always innovate it a little bit to give a taste of what things might be like in the next, you know, 10 years. Okay, so what, what kind of like technical shortcuts um, in that same subject will we expect to see like that, like from like an alien standpoint, like spaceship weapons or anything along those lines or the or, or wet wider? Wider. Wide open. Uh, yeah. In our mind's eye, I mean, we, we keep saying this to people and it's really true. It's like, in our mind's eye, this show starts in this small, semi small place of. It's about an integration program in Baton Rouge, yeah, 10 years after an alien crash landing, but really knock on wood in season, you know, two, three, four, five, six, that will just be the starting point of what's a, an epic story, you know, that has to do with, you know, again, we're going to be even in the season exploring, like, other governments and their response to the fact that there's aliens living in the United States, like, and they're, they're quarantined, and shouldn't all governments have a say in it, and then does this mean, is this a harbinger that more coming, or what has NASA done to respond to this, so we want to be open, the storytelling is going to open up, and from that, gadgets, effects, all that stuff is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. We're going to start to explore what their culture actually looks like, the makeup of it. We'll learn that they have a caste system, that they're actually four different tribes within the ancient race, and they all have their own very specific purpose, and they have their own very potentially specific powers within the race. Um, so that, that's, that's one thing we'd like to explore, and also what their planet looks like, and what are the things that are important to them there that they brought with them. Um, that's, that's one of the things that we're definitely going to explore because we know that coming off of the pilot, there's a great interest in wanting just to know more about them. It's not like Vampire Diaries is a great show, but people have seen a lot of vampire shows and they, they know that vampire mythology. We're getting to really make up our own. And, and speaking of which, one of the fun things is the, the, the language that they speak. Did you guys watch Game of Thrones? Is anybody, the guy that 
created Dothraki, the language that they speak, created Sandiv, which is our language, Michael Peter? David Peterson. David Peterson. And so we, we had a whole language, which is so much fun. <laughs> but first, when, when Meredith was writing the script, we were trying to write the oh, alien language. Right, cluggity, 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 clack. Yeah. And then it was like, nanu, nanu. let's put this in <laughs> exactly. Let's put this in the hands of a professional nanu. language specialist. So, yeah. <laughs> I was curious about the decision to have um, Emery coming back to school for the first time in several years, four years. And, um, you know, instead of having her just be an established student, yeah. so I, how did that come about to, to make her, she's almost in some ways nailing herself to her own. Exactly, yeah. That's... We wanted to find a way to parallel her experience with the atrium. They feel like the other coming into school for the first time. And she, having been a girl who was sick her whole life, and then in the hospital for the last four years, she's very much an other walking into school that first day and kind of looking around all the different groups, like, I don't understand how, where I fit in here. And so it and at the same time, we didn't want to just make her the new girl in town. Like it felt like we've seen that so many times before. This is sort of an interesting thing that we felt like we had never seen, where she, but very real, like the girl that's been out of school because she's been in the hospital. Plus, it gave us the opportunity to have her have this sick friend Julia that then well, that plays in the end. And we we're very happy the day we came up with that. End. <laughs> I can't wait to see where the Joya character goes after. That's a big, they got very cool, lots of cool stuff coming up. She's coming back to school. Yeah. She's healed up. And, That's all I'll say. Yeah. I had a question about the cypher. Um, was her friend completely healed of all that, uh, all of her sickness, or was it just like temporary? And then also, um, uh, now that they know that Cypher can kill people or whatever, will that be available to like the mass, like all the hospitals and stuff? Well, it's funny because you're bringing up a lot of the questions that the agents themselves believe that the government will, you know, find very intriguing and want to blow the secret out. The moment you hear an alien race has a magic herb they can cure cancer, you're going to be all over that. And we're going to discover that the agents, you know, have their reasons for keeping it secret. I mean, first of all, self-preservation. The moment, you know, you're the, you're the She's outsider. She's like, I keep that a secret. That, you know, that's right. You know, the, you, you, just, you just know, like, whether it's pharmacy or like, you know, big government is going to have you like experimented on just like that. So there's self-preservation and it's also this, you know, basis of distrust between the Asians and the humans. So we'll see like, you know, how far you get, you know, down that path. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a big part of the there. first couple episodes after the pilot, like That's it right. becomes the whole thing of Julia wondering how she got cured so quickly, then is this secret going to get out, is it not going to get out, what are the stakes, right. what's, you know, it's yeah. they lead right into it right away. Yeah, and what are the effects of these, what are the effects of these, um, you know, herbs are. And, right, are there side effects, yes. is Julia, yes she's cured, but what else happened to her system because of it? You know? 